Okay, welcome to part three. Um, if you remember from the last part, I mentioned that we have this um, link relating to the feed. So this will be like the next page link in your feed reader. Um, and it, it sort of tells you the href, but we're not going to be using that directly. I mean, you could potentially. You could just set this as your um, the thing in your file get contents. Although it makes a bit more sense just to increment a variable for this bit here. I'm not sure why. Just prefer it that way. Um, so what we need to do is keep incrementing this start index until this rel is not equal to next um, or this link doesn't exist at all because that would mean that there are less than 50 videos so we can just delete this now Whoops. delete this now and then we can change our condition from false to uh, that's still happening so we can change the condition from false to while empty uh, last is false because that means that the uh, link actually does exist so then we can use it and last attributes rel is not oops is equal to next like so what that should do now is continue looping until we get all of the videos. Um, obviously, the last thing we need to just do is change this start from well, change this one to the start variable, like so. Um, so if we reload our page, let's see. It takes a while to load. Okay, um, so we have like the first video and that seems to be working. So we just scroll down to the bottom. And you see it goes past 50 and all the way up to 72 because I obviously have 73 videos at the moment. So like everything below here is in the second cycle of the loop. So from, where is it, 49 downwards here. So this is the start index equals 51. Okay, so that's it for getting all of the videos really. Um, all we need to do now is add the caching sort of code. Um, and that's gonna be applied, whoops, that's gonna be applied to both the um, get playlists and the get videos function. So if you, well, you might have noticed that if I just reload this, it takes quite a while to load. That's because it's coming from um, an external server. And there's quite a lot of data to be transferred. We saw how big the XML document was. It was pretty ridiculous. Okay, so um, what we need to do is uh, add a check here. So we want to do all of this. Well, actually, I can delete that now. We want to do all of this, like, loop and blah, 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 this big chunk that I've highlighted. We want to do that only if the cache file is out of date. Um, so we're going to wrap this whole thing in an if statement which will be if um, well okay let's just talk about the cache file first what we're we'll doing is storing a serialized array this videos array that we end up with in the cache file um, and the path is the cache folder that I showed you before which is in the um, sort of core folder and then we're going to create two text files called video cache and playlist cache um, so here we need to check if these files are older than an hour. So we're going to be updating the video list every hour. Obviously, it, that depends how often you upload videos. If you only upload videos like once a week, you could do it once a day or whatever. So um, what we need to do is check that. Um, we're going to be doing that using the file m time function. So what the file m time function does is gets the last time that a file was modified. So what we need to do is get the current time then take away the file m time uh, it just takes one parameter which is the path to the file which if um, you remember was in our core folder and we have this path variable defined um, which is the full path to our core folder so we're going to be using that here um, although because we're inside a function we don't have access to the path variable directly so I can't just do path uh, I have to use the globals array, or I have to define it as global in the function. Uh, and that just makes any sort of external ver variable um, available to a function. So say you have the variable path, like we have, you can access it inside a function using globals, like so, of path, the path element of the globals array. So that's basically the same as the path variable. So it was in the core folder, and it was in cache. Oops. That should go there. So cache slash uh, video cache dot txt. Ignore that and correct my spelling mistake. Okay, 
So if that is greater than 3600, which is the number of seconds in an hour, I think, um, then we want to do this block here. So we're going to tap this across, and then tap these across, because my editor is silly. Okay, so that is that check pretty much done. Um, and what we want to do if that um, check fails, i.e. if the file is new enough that we don't need to update it, uh, we want to get the array from the file. So we can do that here in this else block. So obviously if we're getting the data from the file we need to write it to the file as well. So inside this first if we need to uh, actually write the file, write to the file. So we're going to be using the file put contents function. So file put contents. Um, and the file we're going to be writing to is this same path here. So I'm just going to copy this down. So just copy that, paste it here. And then the string that we're going to be writing is the result of the serialize function. Um, and then we're going to be serializing the video array. Uh, what the serialize function does is converts an array or an object um, into a format that you can sort of store and then you can unserialize it and get the original array or object back. So it converts it into a string basically and then you can sort of convert that string back into an array or object. So we're writing the file like this um, and then we already have the videos variable defined because we created it in here so we don't need to like set videos equal to anything down here um, but in this else statement we need to set videos videos equal to unserialize which is sort of the opposite of serialize uh, I'll have spelled it wrong so, um, hang on what? ok there we go so unserialize what we're going to be unserializing is the contents of the file so I'm just going to use file get contents spelled wrong contents and then again we're just going to paste that location to the file in there and then because this is a function, we just need to down here return something. And what we're going to be returning is videos, because that's the array that we've been creating. Okay, so that should be pretty much complete now, although there is one problem. At the moment, the cache files don't exist. This folder has no items in it. So when we reload our page, dot dot dot, we get loads of errors, um, because the file doesn't exist, and then you're not allowed to do something. Okay. So what we need to do is sort of force this block to run the first time. Oh, okay. That should say videos there. That's why you're not. Yeah. Uh, for some reason, you can't serialize a simple XML element object, um, and that's what I tried to do that created this error, which has now disappeared. So it's telling you that um, it can't. It, the file doesn't exist, so it can't um, get the last time it was modified. So what we need to do is just force this loop this to run once, and then the file will exist, and then it will work from then onwards. I mean, you could add a file exists check in here, but it'd be a bit pointless because once the file exists, you don't need to check it every time. So what we're just going to do just this one time is add true, or that other condition, and what that will do obviously is just always run this if because true is always true. So if we reload this, so it takes a while to load blank page because we're not outputting anything but no errors which is good and then if we remove this true or hit save ignore that hit reload you see it's a lot quicker because now we're just reading from the file um, so if I go to our cache folder and just reload it you see we have this fi text file created if I just open this up you see this is what the result of the serialized function is it's sort of well you can see that a means array and 73 here is the number of elements in the array and then each of these is like um, an element in the array and it all sort of well it's quite complicated to understand really but when it's um, unserialized it comes back to being a nice array that you can use with your script so in our videos page now I could just add for example uh, the print underscore r here ignore that it reload you see quickly we get the result so this is all of my videos so that's pretty much it actually for the get videos function um, and the get playlist function is almost identical so what we can do is just copy this basically um, and there are a few things that need to be changed obviously otherwise <laughs> it'd be a bit pointless I mean you could have like um, 
a single function that gets both things, which would avoid a bit of code duplication. Well, to be fair, quite a lot of things are different, so it's not really that bad. So what we're going to do is sort of copy um, everything that's inside this function definition, so all the way up to here. I'm going to copy this, and we're going to paste it inside our get playlist function, like so. Hit save. So the get playlist function takes the username. Um, the only the only few, there are a few differences, obviously. So the we're not going to be saving it in the videos cache file. We're going to be saving it in the playlist cache file. Um, the data, the URL that you get data from, is not um, uploads. It's basically just playlists, like so. The last link is still the same. Um, for each entry is not a video. It now represents a playlist. Um, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, the only other difference is that the URL, uh, the first link is a link to your profile sort of version of the playlist. So if you want to show the actual playlist page, you need to change this to a 1 here. Um, and that's pretty much that as well. So, yeah. So obviously the file path needs to be modified here as well. So playlist. Um, and we're saving, oh yeah. We're storing playlists, not videos. So playlists should go here. Uh, tab that across for neatness. Um, and obviously we're going to be serializing the same thing. So playlists. And then we need to be getting the same thing. So playlists. And then we need to be returning playlists. Um, uh, yep, that's the last thing. This path file here, path file, this file path here should be the playlist cache as well. So hit save. And I think that's pretty much everything that needs to be changed. Uh, let's just test it. If it's wrong, then we'll edit it. Um, I probably will have missed something, but let's see. Fingers crossed. So call the pl get playlist function. Hit reload. Ah, playlists. Spell it right. Ignore that. Hit reload. Oh, right. <laughs> uh, we need to force this loop to run as well. Um, because obviously the um, file uh, doesn't exist yet. So here we need to change this to true or that. Hit reload. Um, we'll fix these others there in a moment. Better. So undefined variable video, that's obvious, I forgot to change these to playlist. 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 Um, there's actually quite a good example um, of why you should have these undefined variable messages shown. Um, say if, um, you got, well, you didn't know, you'd get, if you had these hidden, you'd just get um, sort of blank and empty load of strings as your um, sort of result. So each playlist title would be blank, and you'd be very confused as to why, and you'd get angry and break things, and it'll go wrong. But basically, PHP tells you exactly what's wrong if you have it, if you let it. So reload now, empty array. Interesting. We're adding to the videos array. Should be adding to the playlist array. So this is why you shouldn't just copy and paste code down because it's probably quicker to just rewrite it. There we go. Now we have a list of our playlists. Um, the only problem is, you may notice, is that they're in the opposite order to before. No idea why. Um, I think there is a get parameter similar to the max, whatever it was called, and start index. Max results and start index. Um, so what we need to do instead of that, um, well, we can use that, although I don't know what it is. So you can either look that up. Uh, what we're going to do here is just reverse the array. So here we're going to do playlists equals array reverse playlists this function takes one parameter as I've demonstrated it does need a semicolon uh, and what it does is basically reverses the order of an array so then we'll be oh right that needs to be above the file put contents line because then we need to write that to the file um, so if I is that yeah so if I reload our page now you see we get these uh, playlists in the right order. And if I refresh our cache folder, you see the cache uh, file has been created. Uh, and if I just remove this true, 
Um, actually, I'm going to have to stop here because I'm at 15. So in the next part, I'll demonstrate what happens. So join me for that.